Welcome back everyone, my name is Jolette Organista and this is my YouTube channel especially those who are new to my YouTube make sure you subscribe to my channel follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok and you will be listening about my journey here as a study abroad student in Lisbon, Portugal let's get started so today I'm going to be discussing five things that you should know about the academic system here in Lisbon, Portugal, specifically Católica Universidade. Universidade. <laughs> but let's have a <clears throat> let's sit down and talk about it. Cool. A card just hung. I am comparing Lisbon, Portugal to the universities in the United States, especially, specifically the University of Utah because I attend there. Everything that I am saying is my opinion as well as also my thoughts about the academic system. It is neither to set any negative content of the university or again to anyone here in Portugal. I'm just stating how I feel about the academic system. First one, class attendance. Here in Católica Universidade, class attendance is mandatory. So um, at the University of Utah, the class attendance is not mandatory. Um, not that I don't like to go to class, but if you don't go to class, they won't mark you down. Here in Lisbon, Portugal, in Católica, they mark attendance. They will ask if you're here every day in class and if you are late for a certain amount of time they will mark you absent. You can only be absent for three-fourths of the whole semester and if you go beyond those three-fourths then you have an automatic failure or an F in the class, in the course. So it's super important that you go to class and of course, you have to also give an official document excuse. So if you have COVID, they need to, well, they need proof. <laughs> so if you don't have that proof, they will still mark you absent. Number two, dos. In the United States, <laughs> in the United States, textbooks are such a big hassle and a big thing. You go to the campus store and you're about to pay for a freaking $60 textbook that you'll read once and never use again, am I right? Yeah. Here, it is very different. They don't have textbooks. What they have here is this. Sab... Sabet... Sabenta. Sabenta is basically a book that has a lot of different types of PDFs from different books. This one is for my theories of knowledge class and it has also the name of the professor and it also has the years of what publications are in this book. This is what they have, again depending on the course you have, depending on the major, but this only cost me 12 euros. 12 for all this. So that is super cheap and I saved a lot of money this semester for not buying those big old textbooks that I need to buy that are like 30 to 60 dollars and I only read once. My Portuguese class was a little bit more expensive because these were more official books that I needed, workbooks. So this in total cost me around like 50 euros, so the average that I usually need to buy in University of Utah, but um, I really like how my professor is teaching me these books. Number three, tres. The grading system here. The grading system here is so weird. <laughs> I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it, it's weird. So, in the United States, you know that you're gonna get graded A to F. A, B, C, D, E. A, a B, C, D, F. <laughs> or your percentage, right? If you get 95 to 100, that's an A. 90 to 95, A minus. Here, they score you by zero to 20. Zero to 20, which is super weird. 
But here they don't do percentages and they don't do letter grading, it's just 0 to 20. In orientation, they told us that usually no one receives a grade 20, 19, 18, and maybe 17. So if you get a 16, you're doing really great. <laughs> and I think maybe 15 too, but I can't remember. But basically what happens is the scoring based on your participation, you know, your attendance, um, your tests, and the thing is, if you don't pass your test with a 14, I believe, and above, then you fail. <laughs> um, so it's very strict, the grading, and you have to make sure that you do well because if you fail, it's not like the universities, well, professors, you know, you can go talk to them and be like, hey, is there any extra credit? That doesn't exist here. It's you fail, you fail. It really does wire your brain to do or to think a lot more about your grades. Number four, cuatro. Professors do not have office hours here. So in the United States, you know, you will hear professors say, oh, my office hours are Monday through Monday, Wednesday at this time, this time. And probably you don't go to the office hours, but here they don't have office hours in general. If you want to talk to your professor about something, you either have to go before class or after class, but don't expect them to stay around because they don't. So you have to quickly go to them and be like, hey, you know, eu não entendo isso, ou eu tenho uma pergunta, então. Again, they don't have office hours and you have to quickly go in the beginning or in the end of class and you have to respect their lunch time. It's very sacred to them. Again, if you saw my video about the five things that shocked me about Portugal and will shock you about Portugal, it talked about the time that they eat lunch, 12 to 2, and that's very sacred to them. You are not supposed to bother any faculty or professor during their time at lunch because they need to eat and they need to take their break. If you haven't watched that video, make sure you go to my channel. And number five, single. Midterms and finals. So, the classes that I'm taking, they don't have many quizzes, they don't have presentations, maybe one. They don't have a lot of things that I need to do during the semester. It's kind of just midterm and final. And midterm is in the middle of the semester, you know, like usually in the United States. And the final is in the end. But here, which is really different, is this semester ends in May but they don't have their finals until mid-June. So you have like a whole kind of break and then you're gonna take your finals, which I thought was really weird. Cause in the United States, you take your finals the first or the second week of let's say May, cause the semester ends in April. But here you end in May, cause you started later in February and then you take your test in June, which is really weird. <laughs> And again, if you fail your final, they will give you another opportunity to take that test again. But if you fail that one, then basically you fail the class. If you, for example, get a nine on the first test, and then you get like a 16 or 17 on the second test, they won't give you the second score. So again, the grading from the second test. They're gonna kinda give you an average. So maybe you'll pass with the 15. So that's very weird. I can see their culture being intertwined with their academics, with with the way they, they teach the class, the way they, they act in class, and the way they even dress in class. It's kind of, it's very serious. It's for sure very serious and formal. So if you have any questions about the academics here in Portugal, again, make sure you leave any comments for me and I will literally go to the professors and ask the questions that you have because I love practicing Portuguese and I love speaking to my professors at times. That, uh, that is <laughs> the five things that you should know about the academic system here in Lisbon, Portugal, Católica Universidade. First, class attendance. Second, textbooks. Number three, grading. Number four, office hours, and number five, midterms, finals, and just tests in general. really hope that you learned something new because I was very shocked as well. Very in, It was very interesting learning about how they do their academic system. 
It's not that it's wrong. It's not that it's weird. Well, for me it is because, you know, I'm from the United States. But the United States and Portugal isn't either better or worse. It's every country has their own way of doing things because of the culture, because of the customs. So I love learning about Portugal every single day. That is all that I have for you. I forgot to mention, I got this today. My official Universidade Católica hoodie. I'm kind of repping it now. So. Honestly, a lot of people don't wear this, but I bought it because, you know, memories. Again, thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As well, if you think I'm cute, scratch that. If you like my hoodie, give my video a thumbs up. And yeah, we out. Bye.